Welcome to PCL English Worship Service. Today is the second Sunday after the Epiphany, and today's call to worship comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 3. I invite you to listen and meditate on it as you are being called into worship. Give ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. Let's pray. Awesome God, you knew us before we were born. You love us into life. Open our hearts and our spirits today to hear your word for us. And upon hearing the word, may we be convinced of our call to ministry and mission through the church. Bless us with your presence and your powerful love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing the opening song. Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that says a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. my heart to fear and grace my fears revealing how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone Set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised.
Now, let us offer a prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Awesome God, you have made all of creation and each part of our bodies. You know our thoughts and you know our sins. We desperately try to hide our mistakes, our weaknesses, our embarrassments. But you have know it all. And so we come before you now asking for your forgiveness. Even as you know the limits of our human capabilities, we know the unlimited power of your love. Forgive us, cleanse us, make us whole. Amen. Now, let us spend a moment of personal and silent confession. Now, let's confess the assurance of grace. Friends, believe and proclaim the good news. In Jesus Christ, love breaks through hatred, hope breaks through despair, life breaks through death. We are forgiven, loved, and set free. Being reconciled to God and to one another, I'd like to share with you a sign of Christ's peace and reconciliation. You know, God has made us, and He will never desert us. The God of creation is creating still, making us new. So peace be with you and with all of us. Now let us turn to our scripture reading. Today's scripture reading comes from Book of Numbers, chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. Let me read out to you. For the Lord has said to Moses, Each day one leader is to bring his offering for the dedication of the altar. The one who brought his offering on the first day was Nation, son of Abinadab of the tribe of Judah. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels and one silver sparkling ball weighing 70 shekels, both according to the sanctuary shekel each filled with fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering. One gold dish weighing ten shekels filled with incense. One young bull, one ram, and one male lamb a year old for a burnt offering. One male goat for a sin offering. And two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of nation, son of Abinadab. This is word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Due to COVID-19, it has been so long since we were able to gather together physically to worship God. Yet the latest technologies such as YouTube, NeighborBand, Zoom, and other platforms as such enable us to gather online and we have been gathering and coming to the place of worshiping God at home. It looks like it will continue for a while throughout this year. As we gather for worship at home, we miss all the preparational steps to enter into a church sanctuary. Yet we are still a church, and nothing will change the fact that we are the very essence of what makes church today. And even if we continue to worship online, we, are, we can still come before the Lord with the same sense of awe and gratefulness. So what do you bring to give to the Lord today? I wonder if that costs you much. And as you always hope to receive blessing from the Lord, what do you expect to receive from Him today? Are you coming to Him to receive from His fullness so that you are better equipped to worship Him and serve in His kingdom. So how do you see yourself this morning? Are you just sitting in front of a screen? Or 
Do you see yourself as a consecrated, set apart child of the king and ready to be his holy instrument? To be honest with you, even if you barely made it to be in the place of worship, whether it is at your home or church or somewhere else, that's way above anything and you did well. But there are more things to prepare to be stretched. As we want to be the receivers of the Lord's blessings, we are called to offer ourselves generously to the worship of the Lord and the ministry of the gospel. Let me make three observations and then some applications under this point. The first observation is that the costly offerings in Numbers chapter 7 were Israel's response to the richest blessings. Whose blessings? The Lord's blessings. Prior to Israel's response, they had received the Lord's blessings. Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 to 27 talks about the blessings. It is written, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The Lord's people responded by bringing their offerings and their gifts to the Lord. They don't give these offerings to buy God's favor. They give because of all the blessings God has already given to them. In response to God's promise to bless His people, they bring their blessing to Him, the rich and significant gifts, throughout the 12 days of the ceremony. So, what was the purpose of the offering in Numbers chapter 7? The second observation is that the offerings were made possible by the consecrating and furnishing of the tabernacle. Some of them were going to be used immediately for certain offerings in the tabernacle so that it could be properly consecrated, anointed, and dedicated to the Lord God. Some of those gifts were going to be used for the permanent ministry in the tabernacle. The gifts were to be used in the worship patterns of the temple service. The silver plates may have been used in association with the bread of the presence. And the sparkling balls were for the blood that would be sparkled on the altar. The gold dish might have been used for incense, as this is the way it was presented to the Lord. The third observation is that although there were differences in its value and usage, each tribe of the Israel's contribution to the tabernacle was equally valuable. In verses 10 and 11, it is written, When the altar was anointed, the leaders brought their offerings for its dedication and presented them before the altar. For the Lord has said to Moses, Each day one leader is to bring his offering for the dedication of the altar. The literal Hebrew reads, one liter for one day, and one liter for one day. This repetition shows that the pacing that God required, each leader's gift was worth a day's celebration. None of the gifts were to be grouped. None of the Israel's leaders were bunched. Each leader and the people the leader represented was to have his day of approach with the important gifts to the presence of the Lord. It may not be exactly the same today, but each of the 12 gifts was worth about the same back in the Old Testament time. 
The repetition of the offerings by each tribe emphasized that each tribe had an equal stake in the worship of God and that each tribe was fully committed to the support of the tabernacle and the priesthood. While the tribes were varied in number and played key roles, yet each one's giving was equally important. So what can we learn from each tribe's commitment and contribution and the tabernacle? First, our offering of ourselves to the Lord is our response to His rich grace in Christ. Romans 12, 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Like the Israelites, we don't give offerings to buy God's favor. Rather, we give to God because of the blessings God has already given to us. We love because God loved us first. Therefore, we can count our blessings even before we come to the place of worship. Second, offering ourselves make it possible for the Lord's worship and gospel ministry. What goes through in our minds when we give a generous gift to some ministry. We need to step back and see the big picture. When God's grace motivates us to give our money, our time, and our skills, and our very selves, we are not just keeping this church afloat so that we can pay our bills. Rather, the Lord is allowing us to be part of building His kingdom and allowing us and others to worship Him and to serve Him and make Him known for His glory even to the end of the earth. Third, each one of us has an equally valuable contribution to make for Christ's kingdom. One of the points of each tribe in Israel contributing the same offerings was so that no one would be able to boast about their giving. And no one would be embarrassed about their giving. The Lord wanted all of them to see that He has supplied all of their needs so that they were giving from what God has given them. And each contribution was equally valuable. And so it should be with us today as we give according to how God has prepared us. He receives each gift we give and use in the same way. As the tabernacle was anointed for holy service, so Jesus was anointed for a special ministry. And we too in Christ are consecrated for service as God's holy instruments. The focus in the chapter is on the tabernacle, the dwelling place of God, and the altar, the point of approach to God's dwelling. After Moses had completed supervising the construction and the setting of the sacred tent and its altar, he now anointed and consecrated the people of Israel for the Lord's special services. Anoint is the same term used for anointing of special persons. Consecrate means that those present recognize that the tabernacle and its furnishings and the altar and its implements are no longer common items but are now marked out as special, distinct, and set apart in order to worship God. All this point both to Jesus and then to us. Now Jesus was anointed for special ministry. After all, both Christ and Messiah means the anointed one, consecrated for special ministry of redemption. The offerings in Numbers chapter 7, 
which are prepared by 12 leaders of the 12 tribes over 12 days, may point to the giving of Jesus' offering of himself. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. They may point us to Revelation chapter 21 to 22, where we read of 12 gates, 12 foundations, 12 tribes, 12 apostles, 12 angels, 12 pearls, and 12 crops of fruit, which signifies us, the church, his church. Thus we too, in Christ, are consecrated for service as God's holy instruments. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 22 says, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seals of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Do you see yourself this way? As an anointed, set-apart instrument for God, As the Israelites brought their offerings to the tabernacle, so Christ brings spiritual gifts to his temple to prepare us for the works of service so that we may be built up. Let us turn to Ephesians chapter 4 and let me read out verses 7 to 8. It is written, But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. And verses 11 to 13, it continued to say, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 11, it says, It was he who gave. This has altered meaning to Christ as the ascended Lord, who himself has given the gifts to his people who are his temple, the church where he dwells. The exalted Lord Jesus is the one who has endowed his church with gifts by grace so that the church may indeed be his body in the world. Then in verse 12, it says, to prepare God's people for the works of service. Jesus gives spiritual gifts to his people. Not so few individuals can do all the work, but so that pastors and teachers could train the people to do the works themselves so that the whole body of Christ may be built up. This brings full circle to the understanding in Numbers chapter 7 that everyone contributed to the building of the tabernacle. Lastly, Verse 13 talks about the ultimate end in view that is the attainment of completeness in Christ, being built up and mature in Christ. Sacrifice and ministry are essential to the life of God's people. 
the cross of Calvary has replaced the bronze altar as the place of sacrifice. Yet believers are still expected to respond to God's grace by giving themselves to Him and their money to His gospel ministry. What did you bring to give to the Lord today? Let me ask you, did it cost you much? What do you expect to receive from the Lord today then? Are you coming to Him ready to receive His fullness so that you are better equipped to worship Him and serve Him in His kingdom? How do you see yourself? Are you a consecrated, set-apart child of the child of King and ready to be His holy instruments? We need to keep asking these questions as we continue to worship Him and serve Him as His children. Let me pray. Lord, it is our desire to be Your consecrated, set-apart, holy instrument to Your love and ministry. Please continue to inspire us so that we can change the way we think of ourselves and how we come to worship and serve You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, let us sing the responsive song, Hosanna. Let me close today's worship service with the offering prayer and benediction. Father God, we come to your throne with humble hearts 
as we are so thankful for the blessings you give us daily. Lord, we pray that we give you our offerings and tithe that we think the fact that they are yours. It belongs to you. May we never withhold what is yours. Please accept these offerings and tithe with gladness. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to sense your presence wherever we are. Thank you for caring about us, even when we are distracted and chasing after wrong things. Please, Lord, keep walking with us today and tomorrow. May the grace of the Lord Jesus and love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.